Shall we continue? A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Surah Al-Ahzab Ayah number 57 Inna al-ladheena yu'dhuna Allah wa rasoolahu Indeed those people who hurt Allah and His Messenger La'anahumu Allahu fi dunya wal akhirah Allah has cursed them in this dunya in this world and also in the hereafter وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا And He has prepared for them a humiliating punishment. For who? For those people who hurt Allah and His Messenger. The question is, what does it mean by hurting Allah and His Messenger? How do you hurt someone? How do you give other to someone? Giving other to someone can be in two ways. By قول and also by fear. Through one's words, and also through one's actions. So, causing other to Allah by words, by statements. What kind of words would it be that would cause Allah other? Think about it. What kind of words? Like for example, saying that Allah has a son, that He has a partner. Does that statement upset Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Does that make Him angry? Of course He does. What's the evidence for that? In Surah Maryam, what did we learn? That the heavens, they would as though rupture because of it. And the earth and the mountains, everything would be devastated because of the statement. Because this is how much Allah dislikes the statement. And in fact, saying that Allah has a child, saying that Allah has a partner, that He has a son, this is actually an abusive statement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like it at all. Where do we learn that from? We learn that from a hadith. In Bukhari we learn, Ibn Abbas who narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has said that the son of Adam tells a lie against me, though he has no right to do so. And he abuses me, though he has no right to do so. As for his telling a lie against me, it is that he claims that I cannot recreate him as I created him before. And as for his abusing me, it is his statement that I have a son. As for his abusing me, it is a statement that I have a son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not have any son. Similarly, abusing Allah by words, what does that include? Saying derogatory statements about him. Saying derogatory statements concerning him. Attributing to Allah what does not befit him. Describing him in a way that does not befit him. That he is exalted above. Like for instance, the Yahud, what would they say? Inna Allah faqirun wa nahnu aghniya na'udhu billah. That Allah is poor and we are rich. That Allah is asking for charity. He is so poor and we are rich. We are richer than Him. This is what? A derogatory statement. A statement of mockery. This is a statement that does not befit Him. A description that does not befit Him at all. Because Allah is ghani and who is faqir? We are faqir. Ya ayyuhal nas, أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْغَنِي Similarly, saying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gets tired. That like people say that Allah created the heavens and the earth and then He got tired and then He rested on the eighth day. This is what? Abusing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Attributing to Him what He does not deserve. What He is exalted about. Attributing Him with attributes which are negative in nature. Which do not befit His majesty. Which do not befit His grandeur. And part of the other of Allah is denying His attributes completely. That's saying that Allah cannot do such and such. Allah cannot resurrect. He cannot recreate. He does not have the power to create. He does not have the power to question people. This is what? Derogatory statements about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala denying His attributes. So, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ Indeed, those people who hurt Allah. This is hurting Allah by words. What about by actions? By disobeying Allah. By committing usyan. Remember that when a person disobeys Allah, it doesn't cause any kind of loss to Allah whatsoever. Isn't it so? However, what do we learn? وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ Allah does not like kufr for His servants. He does not approve of it. He dislikes it. So when a person disobeys Allah, he cannot harm Allah at all. However, 
he is causing ada to Allah. So in the ladina yudun Allah wa rasulahu. What about hurting the messenger? How can one hurt the messenger? First of all, by denying him, by doing his takrib, by words. How is that possible? By denying him, by saying that he was not a messenger, whereas he was a messenger. Just think about it. You have done something. You do some work. You're qualified for it. You've been doing it for a very long time. You're putting in so much effort in it. And somebody comes and says, no, no, you haven't done it. You didn't do it. Somebody else did it. Would that hurt you? Of course it would hurt you. We do something so small and if our efforts are not acknowledged, we get so hurt, we start crying immediately. And we say, never again. We're never going to do this. So, takdeeb of the messenger is what? Hurting the messenger. Adha of the messenger also includes what else? Think about it. Mocking his sunnah, mocking his ways, objecting at his marriages, objecting at his sunnah. Why like this and why like that? This is like hurting the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Similarly, adha of the messenger includes physically hurting him. All the ways that the mushrikeen had adopted in order to hurt the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like for instance, they would physically abuse him. How? That when he would be praying in the haram, they would come in. What would they do? Put intestines of the camels on top of him. That it would be impossible for him to get up. Just imagine how huge a camel is. And imagine how huge the intestines would be. How much they would smell. And how huge and heavy they must be. Imagine you're in sajda and they've been put on top of you. Just imagine how difficult of a situation the Prophet ﷺ was in. Similarly, he was praying in the haram on Abu Jahl. He dared to go and trample his neck, his head. But he wasn't able to because he saw a pit of fire then. So this is other of the messenger. Similarly, this includes name calling. Calling him a poet, calling him a kahin, a majnoon, a sahir. And this is all that the mushrikeen did. Similarly, Abu Lahab, his wife, what did she used to do? The Prophet Wasallam's house, outside of it she would spread thorns. This is other of the messenger, physically hurting the messenger. And not just physically hurting the messenger, but also emotionally. That when the people accused his wife Aisha Anha of a crime that is unimaginable that she would ever ever commit it. This was also hurting the messenger. And also hurting the messenger includes disobeying the messenger. So those people who hurt Allah and His messenger, لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Allah has cursed them in the dunya and the akhirah. They're distanced from His mercy in both worlds. While they're alive and also when they will die, they're distanced from the mercy of Allah. وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا And He has prepared for them a humiliating punishment. A punishment that is really going to insult them, that is going to humiliate them, physically humiliate them, emotionally humiliate them. It's going to be derogatory, insulting. This is why we learn in Surah al dukhan ayah number 43 to 49, about the punishment of hellfire, that inna shajarat al zakumi ta'amul asim. Indeed, the tree of zakum is food for the sinful. What is it like? كَالْمُهْلِ يَغْلِي فِي الْبُطُونِ كَغَلِّ الْحَمِيمِ Like murky oil, it will boil within bellies like the boiling of scalding water. When you eat something and it's extremely acidic, what happens? It's as though it's boiling inside of you. This is how strong this شَجْرَةُ zakum is that when the people of hellfire will consume it, it will boil in their bellies like oil is boiling. This is how acidic it will be. This is how harmful it will be. That it will burn them from the inside. And if you think about it, Abu Jahl, he made so much fun of Shajarat al zakum Isn't it so? And if you think about it, if somebody offers you food that is stale, that is old, that is extremely bitter, if they offer you food that is not good at all, do you feel insulted? Would you feel insulted? Very much insulted. Adaba muhina. Look at what they will be given to eat. Shajrat al zakum. And on top of that, what will be said? Khuduhu fa'atiluhu ila sawa il jahim. That seize him and drag him into the midst of the hellfire. Not take him, not escort him, but drag him. Is there ihana in this? 
Is there humiliation in this? Of course there is. And then summa subbu falqa ra'sihi min adab al hamim. And then pour over his head from the torment of scalding water. Burning hot water poured over his head. Is there humiliation in that? Of course there is. And then it will be said, Dhuq innaka anta al azizul kareem. Taste, indeed you are the honored, the noble. Why will this be said? In sarcasm. That yes, you were very honorable. You were very noble. Where is your honor gone today? Where is your nobility gone today? So, adaba muhina. A punishment that is going to humiliate them. Physically, emotionally. It's going to insult them verbally. And also, in the way that they will be treated. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And those people who harm believing men and the believing women. After Allah and His Messenger who is mentioned? Believers That those who hurt the believers بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُوا For a crime that they did not commit بِغَيْرِ Without مَا That which meaning a crime اِكْتَسَبُوا They earned Who earned? The believers Meaning they are completely innocent They never did anything wrong They have been falsely accused And they are being hurt For a crime that they never committed Allah says, فَقَدْ احْتَمَلُوا That in fact such people, who? Those who harm the believers, they have carried بُهْتَانًا and slander. What is a بُهْتَان? False accusation. It's from بَاهَةَ فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كفر. What does it mean? To be shocked. And when a person accuses another falsely, what happens to them? They're shocked. So فَقَدْ احْتَمَلُوا بُهْتَانًا Such people who hurt the believers for a crime that they have never committed, then such people are carrying what? The sin of a buhtan. Wa isma mubina And a clear sin. An evident sin. Meaning there is no doubt about their sinfulness. So the harmful words they have said to them, the false allegations they have hurled at them, this is what? Buhtan. All those words with which they are harming the believers, what is that? Buhtan. And what does that result in? Isma mubina. A clear sin, an evident sin. What do we learn from these ayat? We learn from these ayat about the warning against abusing Allah, abusing His Messenger, and abusing the believers. Why? Because the consequences are severe. Abusing Allah and His Messenger results in what? La'na, curse. And any action for which there is la'na of Allah, what kind of an action is it? It's a major sin. It's a major sin. It's completely forbidden. And there is adaba muhina, a humiliating punishment. Any crime for which there is a threat of punishment in the hereafter, what is that crime? A major sin. So abusing Allah and His Messenger is what? It is a major sin. Then we also learn from the ayah that abusing the Messenger is like abusing Allah. Abusing either of them is what? Is of the same seriousness. Abusing Allah or abusing His Messenger is of the same level. How do we learn about that? Because يُؤْذُونَ Allah wa Rasulahu Both are mentioned together in one ayah. And then the believers are mentioned separately. Because why would a person abuse a Messenger? He doesn't accept what the Messenger is saying. He's refusing to accept what the Messenger is saying. Who is one who sent the Messenger? Allah. So if you abuse a Messenger, are you not abusing Allah? Of course, it's the same. Obedience to the Messenger is like Obedience to Allah And disobedience to the Messenger is like Disobedience to Allah Also we learn from this ayah About the perfection of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Where do we learn that from? That it has been said إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ That those people who hurt Allah Abuse Allah Meaning when a person Tries to abuse Allah That Allah he feels adha which is why it has been said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ When a person tries to abuse Allah, does Allah feel other? Yes. This is exactly what is being said. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ Because a person who is abused verbally or physically or in any way, and he doesn't get affected by it, does he have any heart? Think about it. A person is insulting him, saying derogatory words about him, derogatory statements concerning him, physically abusing him, and he doesn't get affected. What's the difference between him and a donkey? 
Think about it. A donkey, you can yell, you can insult, you can mock, you can physically abuse. Will it make a difference? It will not make a difference to the donkey at all. So one who does not feel hurt when he is hurt, this is what? An aib. This is a fault. This is a deficiency. You understand? Do you understand the point that I'm making over here? One who does not feel hurt when others are hurting him, this is what? A deficiency. Because it shows that that person does not have a heart. He does not have a mind. He does not feel anything. He's senseless. He's as good as a rock. He's as good as something that is lifeless. Something that does not have a heart whatsoever. That does not have sense. That cannot differentiate between what is good, what is bad. What is praise and what is insult. Do you get it? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He yata'adha, He feels adha. Which shows that this is not a weakness. Okay? This is not a deficiency. This is in fact a part of perfection. Do you understand? It's a very subtle point, very fine point. It's a part of perfection because it is part of aib to not feel other. And it is more of perfection for Allah because people, what do they do? They give other to Allah, but Allah, He is Haleem. He does not punish immediately. So many people say that Allah has a child, He has a partner, He cannot resurrect, that He does not exist. Aren't there so many people who say that? So many people say that. From the time of Nuh salam till today, thousands and thousands of years. But has the earth been finished already? Has it? No. Have the people been deprived of food and drink? No. Has the human race been exterminated? No. What does that show? The hilm of Allah. How forbearing and tolerant He is. So yes, people try to give other to Allah, but Allah, He is so halim. What does this show to us? The perfection of His attributes. He is so perfect. Also we learn from this ayah that the punishment for a crime is like the crime. is of the same nature. The people try to give adha. Why? In order to humiliate. What will they get? What kind of punishment will they get? Adaban muhina. They are trying to humiliate Allah and His Messenger. What will they get in return? Humiliation. Also we learn from this ayah about the prohibition of hurting the believers. Prohibition of abusing the believers. And it also shows to us about the prohibition of every kind of adhiyya, every kind of adha, whether it is by word or by action. And we have to be very careful over here. Especially hurting believers by words or by actions. Sometimes it's quite possible we use very polite words, very good words. But by our behavior, we are hurting others. How? In the way that we ignore them. In the way that we look upset all the time. In the way we show as though, oh my God, I don't know what has happened. And you are so evil. And I hate you. This expression on the face all the time, this is what? Giving other to people. You see, a personality clash, this is something normal. You don't get along with someone and they happen to be your sister. They happen to be the person who is living with you. They happen to be your sister-in-law, your mother-in-law. Possible. This is possible. However, giving other for no reason, this is not acceptable. Not acceptable. Because sometimes the other person has done nothing. They have done nothing. But we just don't like them. Why? I just don't like them. Why? I just don't like them. That's it. You cannot even explain why you don't like them. Okay, understandable. Because... This aversion that is in the heart has been there from before you were created even. Isn't there a hadith that tells us that at the time when all the people were created for the Ahd Alast, those who were averse to one another over there are averse to one another even in the dunya. And those who got together over there are even together in the dunya. Huh? So this aversion to someone in the heart is natural. It's okay. However, if you hurt someone based on that aversion for no reason. I don't like her, therefore yell at her. I don't like her, therefore blame her. I don't like her, therefore don't look at her. I don't like her, therefore give her a very dirty look. 
I don't like her, therefore, say this harsh word to her. Why? What crime has she committed? بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُوا What crime has she committed? What crime has he committed? Is there a genuine reason behind it? Is there any explanation behind it? There is none. Remember that if a person hurts another believer in this way, then what is he carrying? What does this ayah tell us? He is carrying the burden of sin. Ismam mubina. And there is no doubt about this action being a sin. Mubin, it's clear, it's evident. No doubt about it. So we have to be very, very careful. And sometimes what happens, we give other to people by our actions as well, by our behavior as well. Like for instance, we'll go to the washroom. We will not leave the washroom clean. Or we will leave filth outside. We will not leave it clean. We will not even bother to flush. We will not even bother to wipe the toilet seat. We will not bother to put the slippers where they are supposed to be. And as a result, are we not harming other believers? Of course we are. Similarly, if we don't take shower for several days, if we don't wear clean clothes, if we don't clean our bodies, if we don't remove unnecessary hair from our body, then what's going to happen? Is that going to cause other to others? Of course it will. If we don't clean our mouths, are we going to cause other to other people? Yes, we will. So we have to be extremely careful. Ada through words or through actions because it leads to sin. Isma mubina. Also we learn from the saya that other of a believer for a crime that he has committed, for a crime that he has committed, that is not blameworthy. What does it mean by this? That if a believer has done something wrong, and as a result of that, you take some kind of revenge. Is that wrong on your part? What if he says, you're hurting me. You're not supposed to hurt me. You understand? Like for example, like a teenager girl, she disobeys her mother. And the mother is telling her off. So the daughter says, you're hurting me. I'm a believer. You're not allowed to hurt me. Can she say that? No. Because if the mother is scolding her, this is for a crime that the daughter has committed. What does the ayah say? بِغَيْرِ مَكْتَسَبُ It is wrong to hurt the believer when the believer is innocent. When the believer is innocent. But if the believer has done something wrong, which is quite possible, everybody makes mistakes, and as a result they are punished, they are reprimanded, they are held accountable, they are reproached or, or whatever, then that does not come in this. That is permissible. Which is why we see in Surah Al-Shura, ayah number 40, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا That the retribution for an evil act is an evil one like it. If they have done evil, you can do evil in return. This is why we learn that those who commit evil, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَآذُوهُمَا So give other to them both. Meaning hurt them. Hurting them means, you know, scold them, make them feel bad about what they have done. Why? Because if you don't make them feel bad about what they have done, they will not realize their mistake. Okay? So what is wrong is to hurt a believer who is innocent. And if a believer has done something wrong, it is permissible to hurt him. Hurt him in the sense that in order to punish or in order to teach a lesson. Okay? It doesn't mean that just because you don't like someone, you say, oh, they've hurt me. Just by me not liking them. And you go on. You know, hurting them endlessly. No, this is not what it means over here. Also, there is warning in this ayah against hurting those people who practice the deen. Because a believer is mentioned, right? Now, why would people hurt other believers? Why? Because they would be practicing their deen. They'd be doing what Allah and His Messenger have commanded them to do. So is it permissible to hurt a believer who is observing the deen, who is following the deen? No, it's not permissible. Like for instance, if a girl wishes to put on her hijab, and she wishes to wear proper hijab, if she is hurt, she is made fun of, even by her Muslim friends, is that permissible? It's not permissible. It's not permissible for the family, it's not permissible for the friends, for anyone to hurt her in this regard. Similarly, if there is a brother who is growing his beard, he has his pants folded up, can we make fun of him? Can we give him adha in any way? If we're doing that, then we're committing a sin. 
Because what does Allah say? Buhtanan wa ismun mubina. So all of this is prohibited. Okay, we listen to the recitation. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.